Hi, I'm Stacey Zelli. Welcome to the Meat Minute here at Purdue University. <laughs> you screwed me up. Okay, we'll try this again. Hi, and welcome to the Meat Minute. I'm Stacey Zelli here at Purdue University, and we're going to talk about the importance of purchasing and using a meat thermometer. As a meat scientist, we get asked this question all the time. How can I improve my meat eating experience? And honestly, the first thing I always tell people is get yourself a meat thermometer. How often are you using it? Because when we use things like color and touch, if the juices are running clear, things of that nature, those are all really subjective, and it's amazing the range you'll get on your different products. So using color and texture and things like that are just not good ways to actually check and make sure you're getting your product to the right temperature and that you're not overcooking it. So the question we usually get is what kind of meat thermometer should you want? Should you want to purchase? There's really two basic types. You can get your, your normal dial thermometer and of course a digital thermometer. The dial thermometers are kind of the old standby. One of the nice things about these is generally they're made of glass and metal so you can insert them into the product and they can remain in your oven or your grill or something along those lines. The one tricky thing about a dial thermometer is generally, of course, they're gonna be a little slower to actually read the temperature. And the other thing that you may or may not have ever noticed is that there's generally a dimple. In this instance, you can see the dimple is about two inches from the tip of the thermometer. In this one, it's much lower. It's only about a half an inch off of the tip of the thermometer. This thermometer then is not actually reading the temperature accurately at the tip unless you have that dimple covered. So it's really important to make sure that you actually have a thermometer that's going to be reading your product right. To give you an example with my nice little uh, burgers that we have here, you'll notice that in order to actually get that dimple covered, we'd have to insert the, the thermometer quite a ways into the product in order to make sure we're actually getting it covered. So again, it's not, a, it's not super accurate for smaller items. It means it's a lot better for things like your whole turkeys or large roasts or things of that nature. A digital thermometer is generally always going to be your best bet. And to be honest with you, these have come down in price quite a bit. So there's a lot of variation in the prices that you can uh, purchase these in. A digital thermometer is generally going to have a smaller probe to it, and obviously it's going to be much faster in reading your temperature. Um, there are ones that you can actually get that are cordless. There's lots of different types. Uh, people usually ask, well, what's the difference between a $100 one and a $10 one? And I'm like, $90. So there's about, uh, the difference is really going to be obviously the convenience generally. You can always check either a dial or a digital thermometer for their accuracy using ice water or boiling water. Now, last but not least, I want to talk about how to use this dial thermometer, I'm sorry, digital thermometer, uh, when we're looking at any kind of our normal products that we'd expect to get off of a grill. So with a burger or a steak or turkey breast or chicken breast, whatever, a lot of times people want to just stick the meat thermometer in the middle like this. That's a terrible way to actually measure the, the temperature. The best way is always to pick the the chop or burger up off the grill, and we want to insert that thermometer from the side. That way I'm not going to be going too high or too low, because I know the top and the bottom are going to be the hottest parts of that product. So I want to make sure I'm getting into the coldest part of that product, again, to ensure my safety and, of course, maintain the quality of my product. So make sure you get yourself a good thermometer and use it. That's always the trick number two. We look forward to talking to you on future videos.